Hi, Paul Sackett's Good News Broadcast, speaking to Julie Edelman. Hi, Julie. How are you? I'm good, Paul. How are you today? Okay, good. A.K.A. I wonder what that A.K.A. always stands for. But I think it means, in your case, the accidental housewife. It does. It means also known as. Oh. That's right. Oh, when, is that what it is? That's right. When I go into manicure protection, that's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have that under wraps. Well, what do you mean an accident? You, be, you became a uh, housewife by accident? Well, yeah, you know, sort of <laughs> I fell into it. Forgive me. It was like the perfect storm. You know, I graduated college. I was a professional woman. I got married. Toilet seats went up. I started falling in. You know, I had a child. <laughs> stopped doing... <laughs> yeah, I had to go from doing lunch to doing dishes and diapers. Uh -huh. And somebody had to clean the house, and I you know, accidentally was the one tasked with those responsibilities. So here I am embracing the fact that I can do it good enough and that I am an accidental housewife and that's okay. That's part of the message I too. I think the housewife position or whether it's a house husband is the hardest job in the world. That's right. And uh, forgive the pun, it's a dirty job and someone's got to do it. And whether you're a man or woman, you can be an accidental housewife. It's about being tasked with the responsibilities. But hopefully I'm uh, making them a little easier. I'm certainly hopefully sa saving time and much more fashionable. How to Overcome Housekeeping Hysteria. That's One right. task at a time. That's her best-selling book, The Accidental Housewife. So what are we going to talk about here? What, what are some good things? Well, you know, it's the winter, things are getting colder, energy costs are on everybody's mind, particularly after last winter. There is some good news, although people on average spend about $1,900 a year on energy um, costs, expenses, that the winter is supposed to be milder. Of course, that's a weatherman talking, and I love them, but, you know, mm -hmm. we, can, we can each be 50-50. Uh, and then also the fact that, you know, we just need to figure out ways to conserve the way whether it's warm or not warm for oil costs, whether you have them or natural gas, whatever. So I've got some easy tips here and tricks to do just that. Okay, what are those? All right, let's start. The kitchen, okay? The kitchen has lots of energy eaters. The oven, I have a do not disturb sign on it, Paul, so don't come over for dinner unless you're bringing. But, um, <laughs> but honestly, kidding aside, if you use your microwave or you use a crock pot, you can save up to 75% on your energy bills. Uh -huh. Really easy, mindless, plus kids can, you know, cook for you so you can save some personal energy. Um, here's a really good tip as well. I like you, Julia. You've got a you. good attitude there. Right. You know what? I, I mean, look what we're doing. We're doing these chores at Bore. If we can't smile a little bit more and look that, you know, life is too serious. We need to take a breath and, hey, we're all doing the best we can. So, a smile is important. So back to my lemons. I feel like Vanna here today. Um, here's a very easy way to clean your microwave without using harsh chemicals. You take a lemon, you slice it in half, and then you put it in the, a bowl of hot water, of water, excuse me, then you put it in your microwave, you let it in there for two or three minutes, depending how dirty it is. I don't know about you, but you know, I'm always shuttling my son off to school and trying to get him ready, so I reheat my coffee about 20 times and it starts to bubble over or the cup explodes. You leave it in there, and then be careful, though, when you take it out because it may be hot, so let it cool off. Maybe, Paul, you want a little bit of a facial from the hot water? Excuse of me. Of course. Why my, not? My ear just fell out. Are you there? Are you there? I'm here. Okay, I'm okay. here. I'm, I'm here. I'm good. I'm, I'm thinking about the facial. Do I want that from yeah, that way? Let it and the come answer up. is yes. It's, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. That's right. Right. And this is very simple. And then you just wipe it down with a uh, with dampened microfiber cloth, and you'll be good to go. Yay. So, so that's one. Two. Laundry, a major chore that bores, one that, you know, I've tried to lighten the load. But, you know, here too, energy-wise, 80% of really what the expense is in our, when we do our laundry is heating the water. And you know the old housewife tale that hot water is the only thing that gets coats clean? Wrong! Falsetto, or false. Mm -hmm. Really, cold water works great. And I use Tide cold water, which I love because my son loves to use his pants as napkins. So they get really cruddy. And Tide cold water in cold, uh, well, actually in cold water, works better than other laundry detergents that use warm water. So you want to try that energy saving. Plus now, Paul, it comes in HE. So all around, you're saving money on both your energy and also for me, having to buy my son new pants because I can't get the stains out. But since you've used it and you've tried it, because I guess some people do think when they're doing, uh, you know, uh, uh, whites that they should use hot water. But it's true, it's an energy, uh, uh, one of those efficiency, in inefficiency kinds of things because... That's what we're doing. But you're saying uh, that this does work. And it works you're happy great. With it. it works great. And, you know, you can use some pre-treaters, too. If something immediately, the best thing to do sometimes when you see a stain in particular is to treat it immediately before it sets in. And never, by the way, 
just in case you do this, put a item from the washer into the dryer before you get that stain out. Otherwise, it will become a permanent embellishment and you'll have to use something like a pin or you know, cut the sleeve off, make it short sleeves because it will set and then you'll really have more of a problem. Uh, I see here about 90% of energy used for washing clothes uh, in a conventional top-loaded washer is for heating. Wow. Yeah. So, and there's energysavers.gov. I guess there's a website there people can check out, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in my book, I talk, uh, the, the new book is The Ultimate Accidental Housewife, and I talk about a convenient truth versus the inconvenient. And again, it's about blending these things into your everyday life, not trying to do it all. It's balance. You know, it's, it's about not becoming the queen of green overnight, which leads me to another tip for the laundry room. Great. This good old filter and your dryer. What you want to do is every time before or after, clean that little baby out because this sure. stuff will clog it up. It's also a fire hazard if you don't clean I it. I agree, I agree. And even the, uh, the filter be from your washing machine, uh, from your dryer to your outside. Absolutely. You gotta have to check that out also. Right, and I often use, you know, again, I like using things around the house because that's real life. I'll use a blow dryer even to try and blow some of that stuff out of the tube that you're talking about. But a flexible, you know, microfiber duster is great because it'll attract the, the yuck that's in there and you pull it right out mm -hmm. and you'll be good to go and it'll save you perhaps up to 30% there as well. So Julie, what do you think things. about the environmental uh, mindset now with uh, the world about, at least here, in, in, let's just talk in America, that more people are thinking the word green and that it's not just money, it's the word uh, green environmentally minded. I think so. You know, I speak um, at different conferences. I was at the Go Green Expo in New York and several others, and I'm on uh, Citadel has a greening of America. Uh, yeah, they, people are much more, it's become much more organic, though, mm -hmm. versus something that you have to be these activists. My son, you know, learns more and more through school and through just everyday life. His perception about trying to be more um, sensitive to doing little things, like even a light switch, you know, turning that off. So I think there is this created awareness, but it's much more organic versus forced. Mm -hmm. um, like everything, when something first comes out, it becomes very trendy. Now it's not trendy, it's lifestyle. Uh -huh. Well, we agree. I don't know if you know about us, but uh, we do a show called The Water Hour, which okay. is, is very appropriate. Too. We've done 36 hours. We just did a concert on 26th Street Pier called Water, Not Weapons, and oh, cool. uh, we help create the United Nations International Decade of Water. Oh. So we're very involved with the environmental issues and, and outreaches for many trillions of years here. But uh, um, we see a, it's a tremendous amount of people really, really coming to the table here and looking at their life in a, in, a, in a different environmental way. Yeah, and as I said, it becomes more of your lifestyle versus a forced, you know, I've got to do this, I've got, and that's why I also share when I give, when I do chat to the, at these expos and so forth, that, you know, it's okay, do it at your own pace, because every little bit is better than nothing. And that was the first year of that expo. They did yeah. real well. Yeah. And we uh, have a big story, a big special on that one. Oh, did you? Were you out in California as well at the LA or just local? We just here? did the New York one. Right. Yeah, well, I, I find it, you know, it's very rewarding to me because, again, I'm not trying to tell people, it's like the title of my book, Clean Enough House. It's about being green enough. And if we're all just a little green enough, you know, changing that bulb that was the old one, the fluorescent, not, not right away, but when it, you know, when it, explodes no <laughs> but um, when it dies out that's fine you know just little steps and it's important to realize that in essence everybody's a polluter in their that's own right. way it's just by living mm -hmm. we are it's a natural kind of thing of humanity so it's a question of to what degree uh, we, are there ways that we can make some savings right absolutely and also you know i like to multitask multi-purpose things like newspapers for example i use them to both clean you know chrome shine it also, it doesn't have any lint, so if you want to not use paper towels, it's great for mirrors after you've used it. It gets a little crinkly, you know, and it does put a, that's why I wear my gloves. Also, it's a great odor absorber, so, uh, which makes me wonder, Paul, is that why so many of us read it in the bathroom? I don't know. Just, go, just throwing that out there. But, but anyway. I mean, Julie, you're, really, you're cool here. Thank you. Uh, sanity savings. I like this. For more sanity savings, echo and echo friendly. Yes, eco-friendly and ego-friendly. Oh, ego. That's right. Oh, it's ego and echo. There right. it is. Okay. Good for you and good for the world. That's all good. Okay, right. well, let's be clean enough, a clean enough house, and uh, give some consideration. Last question, Julie. What's good news for you? What's good news for me? Good news is just being able to take a breath and look at my son and see him smile every morning. Yay. How old is your son? He just turned, well, just not just, 15. 
And yeah. uh, he's at that age, but I, I feel very fortunate to have a, you know, his son who just, you know, is happy in this crazy world. It's a good thing. It's That's good, good news. news. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Julie, I'm going to call you again. Hopefully you come to our Halloween party. All right, I'm looking forward to that email. during the day. We're going to have a big concert. All right. I look Thanks. forward to it. Thanks, Alrighty. Paul. Have Take a great care. one. Bye.